All right, so we are looking at muscles. This is part one. Um, <clears throat> we're going to look at muscles of the head, neck, and chest. We're going to be looking at all of these muscles. Be sure to look at your list. Uh, they are grouped according to uh, some of them start movements, and then we have muscle groups that work together as a unit. All right, so we're going to be looking at these. And hopefully um, what you've learned with your skeletal unit is also going to really help you to find some of these muscles. All right, so here we have the muscles of facial expression. You would never believe how many muscles we have in our face just to give us expressions. And I know you see all those weird faces that I have a strange habit of making when I talk and record, and it seems to freeze frame right on those every time. But, you know, that's just part of uh, the crazy scientist mentality, I suppose. Um, and so this is a model that we actually have in the classroom, um, and I'm trying to make this as realistic as possible, and I want to be able to keep this uh, for something that I can use in the classroom as well. Um, and so I hope that you uh, enjoy this unit. All right, so orbicularis oculi, and hopefully you watch the intro lesson and understand the, the reason why it's important to understand what these words mean, okay? And uh, orbicularis oculi, well, oculi obviously refers to the eye, and orbicularis basically means little circle. So this is a little circle around the eye, and it helps to close your eyelids. I really like this particular picture here from APR because you can just see it quite well, which they're easy to see on the models as too, but I just really like that picture. All right, so next we have the buccinator. I usually tend to pronounce it buccinator, uh, but it is technically, uh, I believe, buccinator. Um, say it however you want. As long as you can spell it, we're good, right? So this is uh, also kind of known as the trumpeter muscle. It pulls the quarters of your mouth laterally, presses the cheek against the teeth. So this is what you would need to do in order to blow into an instrument like a trumpet. And you can see uh, it's it's under here. It's not these two here, but it is. Let me turn, use my pen here. You probably can't see my mouse. It's right in there. And then you can see it really clearly here on APR. Okay. So be sure you learn these on both APR and on the models. That is important. All right. Um, it helps you to go back and forth between the two and you learn it really better. Um, and it can be really hard to go from one, even one model to another without practicing them. So please be sure you practice these a lot and review them every day. All right, so remember that occipital bone in the skeletal system? All right, so this is going to cut down a little of your studying if you really learned all those tone, uh, terms. Uh, this is sometimes put together, these muscles, the occipitofrontalis would be referring to both muscles, all right? Uh, but I'm going to ask you for either the occipital occipitalis or the frontalis separately, all right? So be careful with that, okay? Uh, but I do want you to know when you see occipitofrontalis, that's not necessarily incorrect. They're just talk, talking about uh, the whole muscle going from here to here and this white stuff here, which is actually called uh, aponeuresis, all right? Okay, so uh, occipitofrontalis is the back and the front of the head, uh, and these two muscles are what pull the scalp uh, in the case of occipitalis, posteriorly, so it pulls the scalp backwards and elevates the eyebrows from the front as well, okay, if you're looking at the frontalis portion. Next, we have mentalis, and remember in skeletal, we had the mental foramen, we're talking about mental here. Mental refers to the chin, uh, and so this is a paired set of chin muscles, and it ele elevates, see, I'm trying to demonstrate, y'all, which is probably really kind of funny watching that elevates the, that's more than just that one muscle, but it elevates the chin muscle, okay? You can see the V right over there on the left really well, uh, but then it's also right there. So remember, this is a paired set of muscles. All right, so show me where is your temporal bone? Temporal, right? By the temples, tem temporal bone. So the muscle right there is the temporalis, the temple of the head. This helps to elevate or lift up the mandible, and it can also retract it, so pull it back posteriorly. So I probably should have moved this up. Uh, well, well, maybe not. Um, probably, actually, it's a good thing that I didn't. Orbicularis oris. So remember, orbicularis means a little circle, and so we did orbicularis oculi, 
And now orbicularis oris is the one that goes around the mouth. So it's a little circle around the mouth. And this muscle is what actually helps you to purse your lips. All right, so next we have the masseter, and this is what helps us with mastication. And that is something we'll learn about in anatomy and physiology too, mastication or chewing. So this actually means chewer in Latin, muscles of mastication, and this also helps to elevate the mandible. All right, so this is platysma. Platysma refers to flat plates, so think flat, flat. So this is a very flat muscle right here. Uh, and it's something we probably, somebody my age, which is the skin would be flat, right? Because it gets really wrinkled, right? Um, and so maybe that'll help you remember. You can see how wrinkly my neck is. You'll think, oh, that needs to be flat. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever helps you remember it, all right? So this is a broad sheet-like hair, hair set of muscles. This draws the corners of the mouth down like that, all right? And it helps in depressing or lowering the mandible. All right, so there's that frontalis, uh, and so this is the front of the head. And remember, it can be paired uh, together and called occipital frontalis, but for your exam, I want it to be frontalis, okay? That's what I will be asking you for, frontalis. Uh, this helps to elevate the eyebrows. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and wrinkles the forehead, all right? If you do it too much, it might give you more wrinkles. Not really. All right, so we've got the zygomaticus. We've got major and minor, all right? So this is the greater muscle of the zygomatic bone. All right, y'all remember the zygomatic bone and then the zygomatic process. And so this really should, in some ways, I don't want to say it's an easier unit, but you're building knowledge on what you already learned. So if you did the work in the skeletal, it is going to help in this unit, all right? Uh, so this is going to elevate and draw the corners of the mouth laterally. All right, so lift up and pull it back. Um, and I know y'all can laugh at my face, this is okay, I don't care. Uh, so then we also have the lesser zygomaticus, uh, and that elevates the upper lip only, the upper lip. I think there's a slide on that one here next. All right, and it's hard to tell on the model, but you can see in the APR images, the minor is smaller. Major always means the larger one, and minor means the smaller one, all right? And so uh, you just have to be careful on the model. You might want to be careful, find a way to help you remember which one major becomes before minor, maybe would help you remember that. All right, so remember pterygoid, we had a pterygoid plate and it means wing-like. So medial means middle. So this is a wing-like muscle. Uh, it is going to elevate, or wing-shaped, I should say. It is going to elevate and protract the muscle to help do that. There's not usually just one muscle that performs an action. It's usually a group of muscles. And we actually have agonist um, and antagonist muscles, where one will contract and the other will need to release in order to uh, serve a specific function. And so they kind of work opposite of each other, but yet in conjunction. All right. And so you can see we have superior lateral pterygoid, superior belly of the lateral pterygoid, inferior belly of the lateral pterygoid, and then medial pterygoid. Okay. And so right here, you just need to know the medial pterygoid there. You can see that it, it kind of sits at an angle. All right, so here we have the sternocleidomastoid. And all of those words help you to understand what this is working with or where, where it work, this is working with or where it's located. Uh, and so we have the sternum, so it's drawing down towards the sternum. And then here we have, of course, our clavicle. Um, the sternum, clavicle, and mastoid processes. All right, so the muscle draws the mastoid processes down towards the same side, which causes the chin to turn up towards the opposite side. All right, and so these act together, the muscles of the two sides flex the neck, okay? Flex the neck. So you have probably heard of your traps before when we talk about muscles, trapezius. Uh, this means table-shaped. 
uh, and, it's, and it kind of forms a trapezoid. It's, it's kind of hard to see because of the angles here, but it basically, it's almost a, a diamond shape there. You can kind of see the outline here. It's a little harder to see because it's kind of sitting at an angle, all right? And here, this APR image is only showing you one side. Uh, so table shaped is what this means. Uh, this elevates and depresses the scapula or the shoulder blade, uh, depending on which part of the muscle contracts. It can also rotate the uh, scapula superior or retract it, pull it back. All right, splenius uh, capitis. This means head patch. And so this is right here on the back of your head. And this is going to extend and laterally bend the neck and head and rotate the head uh, to the same side, splenius capitis. So semi-spinalis capitis, semi, of course, we think halves or two maybe. Spinalis, of course, along the spine. Uh, and then capitis, remember, means cap. So this extends the head and rotates it to the opposite sign. It's on either uh, the half of the of the head on either side of the spine, and it does what we call bilateral contractions. Uh, extension of the head, of course bilateral means two-sided, extension of the head, uh, the cervical and thoracic spine as well, uh, the top of the thoracic spine anyway. Um, for unilateral contraction, um, we're going to have some lateral flexion of the head, cervical and thoracic spine, we would call that ipsilateral and rotation of the head, cervical and thoracic spine, contralateral, contralateral or opposite sides, ipsilateral means same sides. Um, and I don't test you necessarily over what these movements do, uh, but it does really help you to understand them and know what they do. That is important. Um, if you have problems like, you might, you might have noticed on the videos, uh, maybe you haven't, but uh, my head's a little bit crooked, right? Because I have issues with my cervical, um, vertebrae in my head is shifted to the side and so I have lots of issues with all of these muscles. So knowing what the motions do is really important uh, when it comes to therapy for dealing with the chronic pain that I have regarding my neck. Um, and so it, it may be something that you may or may not need depending on which path you take, but you really never know in life which path you're going to take. Okay, Some of you might be going on to be uh, PTAs or or physical therapist or something like that. Um, or you could wind up working in a doctor's office that specializes um, in orthopedics or something. And so kind of understanding which muscles do what is helpful. It helps me when I have problems and I need to stretch that I can go specifically and look up specific stretches for specific muscles that I know I'm having trouble with. Uh, for instance, I do have, not near as bad, but a little issues in my lower back, and so I know that those issues are related to uh, my SI, or sacroiliac, um, and they are related to uh, the psoas muscle. And so I look up specific stretches for those, and it helps me tremendously to know which muscle that I need to stretch and what it is performing. If you sit a lot, you can tend to have SI issues, okay? And so, like I said, I, I don't test you necessarily over knowing what they do, but understanding what these muscles do and how they work is, is important for you to know. All right, so next is erector spinae, and you need to remember as we're looking at this, and you can see pretty well in uh, this image right here, um, we're looking at layers of muscles here. We tend to think of just having one muscle and then, then bone, but we have layers of muscle and uh, fascia and things that, that, that come in layers. And so we have to be careful and try to think about what layers uh, we are looking at, okay? And so this is a rector spinae, and it's actually a group of muscles that go along your spine and help, of course, maintain your erect or upright status, okay? Um, these help extend and laterally bend the trunk, the neck, and the head, and they contain the group of uh, iliocostalis lumborium, iliocostalis thoracis, so lumbar thoracic, iliocostalis cervicis for cervical, and then we have the iliocostalis lateral group. Okay, and so these are groups of muscles that work together. Iliocostalis lumborium. Thoracis, cervicis, then we also have uh, longissimus, and those are an intermediate group. Um, and I already said thoracis, didn't I? I think I've got all of them now. 
Okay, and so this is a groups of muscles, and we'll look at some of these in a little more detail, but uh, not necessarily all of them. All right, so here's the erector spinae groups. Uh, uh, just a good picture here, you can see the iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis. All right, so we have the um, greater rhombus, and a rhombus is an equilateral parallelogram. And this retracts, elevates, and rotates the scapula inferiorly, and you will see we also have a rhomboid minor. So of course, major is going to be the larger one. All right, so here's the lesser rhombus, and you can see it is the smaller one. So it is on top, and then the greater one is beneath. Uh, this also helps to retract, elevate, and rotate the scapula inferiorly. Latissimus dorsi, and for some reason I really like that word, latissimus, uh, but you think lat or lateral, um, and so these are on the sides, and a lot of times us older women really like to work on these uh, to try to get them um, uh, not flabby. <laughs> Uh, and so latissimus dorsi means very wide back. You can see these are some wide, uh, long, lengthwise wide muscles. And these help with adduction, extension, and rotation of the arm. Next, we have the levator scapulae. And this just basically means scapula lifter. If it's the scapular lifter, it elevates the scapula. Here we have the serratus anterior. Serratus refers to sawtooth, and so anterior, of course, is in the front, and so these are the front sawtooth-shaped muscles. It draws the scapula, or they draw the scapula forward, and the inferior fibers rotate the scapula superiorly. Next, we have the pectoralis major, and so that should tell you that we are going to also have a pectoralis minor, all right? And so this is, you should know what your pecs are, right? Guys like to flex those a lot, uh, if they're young guys usually, anyway. <laughs> uh, these are your greater chest muscles. Uh, so this flexes and adducts the arm, add with a D, not abduct, take away, adduct, bring towards. So it, it brings the arm immediately rotating in. All right, so here is pectoralis minor. So this will be the smaller pec muscle, and you can see it is quite a bit smaller. It draws the scapula forward, medial, and downward. You can see there's three little muscles there, four actually. All right, next we have the transverse abdominis. Transverse of course, means it's going to be laying transverse, and abdominus refers to abdomen, so belly crossing muscle, and this compresses the abdomen. All right, so we have the intercostals. Uh, intercostal, uh, costal refers to ca uh, cartilage, and inter means between and then external toward, means towards the outside. So the extra, I'm sorry, external intercostals is the outer muscle between the ribs. Um, this helps keep the intercostal space from blowing out or sucking in during respiration or when we are breathing. All right, so now we have the internal intercostals. Uh, so this will be the ones more towards the inside. And so this little picture here is off that uh, little, it's a little woman um, model, and that's the one we've been looking at. And this is, we are looking from the inside perspective. And so you can see the sternum is there. And so this is where uh, we are looking from the posterior side. And so the anterior side is what's laying down on the table. And so you basically cut the front portion off and you're looking at it from the inside. So these are the internal intercostal. And then this keeps the uh, intercostal space from blowing out or sucking in during respiration. All right, so lastly here, uh, we have the diaphragm, which is a very important muscle of respiration. Uh, and this lays kind of long words across and encloses. It pushes the abdominal viscera down inferiorly and increases the volume of the thoracic cavity during respiration. And we'll learn more about how this works in respiration in anatomy and physiology too. 
Uh, and so we don't have the best look at this particular muscle on the models. APR is a pretty good uh, view there, but do be sure you know, know, know both of these for your exam.